Um, and what a lovely idea that they are they are creating a meetup there, uh, and and that's spelled M E A T U P. Um, <laughs> I like that. I like and, that. and just 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 so you know, we are going to be showing graphic depictions of meat eating here, uh, yes. which I know is, isn't everybody's cup of tea. And so I don't want to upset anyone un unnecessarily, but of course, meat eating is a a vital part of Portuguese culture, um, as you can see from this picture here. Um, this um, I'm gonna I was gonna say this old boy. Um, I don't mean that in any disrespectful way, but I suspect he is one of the elders of the community who's just having a little look to make sure everything's being done correctly. Is that right, Owen? That's that's Eduardo, Ed, Eduardo Becker. Okay. And for those of you, for anybody that does follow football, Eduardo is the uncle of the uh, Liverpool FC goalkeeper. And no Alison. way! Yes. Wow, incredible. So okay. and it was great fun. I, I had some great fun with, with, with Eduardo on, on Sunday uh, talking too. about football and, and obviously food as well. Yeah. And there's something about the statues that they like the, the human form here, don't they? Especially the ladies, I think. Uh, the, or the they, they do. They do. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an absolutely beautiful place. I mean, the, the, there are three separate um, accommodations which people can rent. And as I say, uh, during the, they, they closed during the pandemic, and they, they they're just about reopening. So this was more or less um, a, a welcome event, you know, a reopening event. The food was done by um, they actually have an Instagram page, which is Olgas das Americas, which yeah. is um, two guys from Argentina and one guy, a friend of mine called Sam from the USA. So that they provided all the meats and the foods that was there, and they, they did all the cooking. There. I wasn't there to cook at this particular time. Some sweetbreads there, and we did have some vegetables. Look, we have the we have the what? aubergine the eggplant. <laughs> and when the you say peppers. when you say sweetbreads, are the are these actually the testicles of uh, animals? I, I do believe so. I mean, I, I got confused with with brains and testicles. It is actually yeah. testicles. I checked up this morning. Wait, but wait. Yes. Okay, so you were going. You, were, I mean, that that's what I want to say um, here about um, meat eating in Portugal. I mean, there were some there were some fine looking grilled and roasted vegetables there, and salads, and obviously the batatas fritas as well. Um, and um, what I wanted to say about uh, meat eating in Portugal is, you know, you, the, of course, it is, um, you know, a matter of personal taste. Some people like eating meat, others don't. What's great about the, the culture here in terms of eating meat is, uh, and I don't know if you'd agree with this, Owen, but it, it's um, it's as respectful as it can be. I mean, obviously, you're slaughtering yeah. an animal, but this this is, this is uh, you're, you, you know, like, like I think it was Deagle who said when he saw a skinned rabbit in a supermarket, it looked like a baby dinosaur. You know, you're coming up close and personal with meat in Portugal. In other cultures, I think they've dealt with their squeamishness about meat by letting other people, um, well, I do that, uh, certainly, you know, deal with the slaughtering um, and, and the butchering. But it's much more um, respectful in the sense that people are eating the whole animal here. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not just consigning it away out of sight, out of mind and eating the end product. It's a much more visceral and real thing here in Portugal, you're seeing what's going on, and it looks like people are eating as much. If we're if we're talking about brains and testicles, we are eating as much of the animal as possible, and in a strange way, respecting it from that point of view. Absolutely. I mean, there, 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 was, there was all all sorts from from tongue. Yes, I've seen the comment there by 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 Solar Life. So yes, sweetbreads are brains. It's just my 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 confusion there. But it, we okay. we had. Just the, the whole selection of food. It is, as you say, Cal, very, very respectful towards that. The Portuguese do, do, do love their meat. There were, there were, I think there was only one vegetarian that was there, but though obviously there was vegetarian food, you know, uh, provided. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it, it's. I, I love it. You know, in comparison, you can you can go to far worse places. I mean, if we talk about some places in in Africa. You know the animals are slaughtered and, and they're eaten straight away. But even the cooking process. So there's, there's, there's varying there's varying degrees degrees of how you would eat the meat throughout the world. Yeah, and I'm sure a well, lot definitely here in Portugal the, the, the meat is respected. Very yeah, much so. everything is eaten apart from the squeak is one uh, expression I've heard about uh, meat. Exactly that. Uh, Dougie wrote an article about my experience of meat processing and eating in rural Portugal. Well, see if you can find that for us, Doug. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I'm sure. Sure. 
Um, he also says, because I showed a massive pile of salt just now, which is, of course, very important in the cooking process and uh, is harvested or cultivated, or, I don't know, collected all around Portugal. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Hughes has a habit of buying sea salt when we go abroad. I annoy her when I tell her it all tastes the same. Not like you helped me the other day with olive oil, extra virgin and virgin and non-virgin olive oils. There is a difference. There is a distinction between salts, isn't there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, I, I never use extra virgin olive oil when I'm cooking because, you, as, as, as you'll know, it's, it's a very strong and distinctive taste with that. And you don't want, I wouldn't want to, you know, um, disguise that taste over that. I, so I prefer to use just the, 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 the standard olive oil when I am frying yeah. And, and I use the extra virgin olive oil when I'm making salad dressings because it, it, because of the flavour. Definitely, definitely. A bit of flavor. salt in there as well. What, uh, what's your favourite salt to use? And can we help Dougie in understanding the difference between your processed salt that I think has been bleached and had iodine added or whatever and lovely rock salt that we find so easily in Portugal? I, I, I tend to change depending on what I'm cooking. I, I actually quite like the Himalayan pink salt. Mm, to yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. balance in the middle. And it's pretty as well, isn't it? Squire of the Shires. Morning, Squire. A big difference in mineral content and additives in the store-bought salt in comparison with the natural pure sea slash rock salt. So in, in, a, in, a, in a, a, like a proper chef or cook's kitchen, it, you wouldn't be as surprised would it to find a number of salts of different kinds for different applications rather than the uh, salt. I associate the, the fine salt with my grandparents' generation, you know, like pouring out of yeah. a white pepper. <laughs> I think that was a brand mate growing up, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Well. And, and like so many British products, I imagine it was the last bit in the processing chain, a bit like our tea bags, you know. And the rest of the world is enjoying the lovely subtleties of tea, and we have the floor sweepings put into paper sachets and call them tea bags. And I'm sure <laughs> it's the same with salt. You know, the rest of the world is like, give us your finest rock salt and herbs and spices. And the British are like, it's all right. We're happy with what you sweep up on the floor at the end there. Just put it through a bleaching process and turn it, make it really fine. <laughs> well, we'll I, I, I tend not to, during the cooking process, I tend not to use salt on the food. I think it's something that should be used just ever so slightly when you're eating yeah, to, yeah. to your own taste because I think yes, you can, yes, you, at the point you of can mask and ruin, ruin the, the, yeah. the flavour by putting it on before you cook. Well said, well said. Hit that like button, folks, says Antonio. Good to have you here. We got to Antonio's answers to the, the picture quiz earlier on. And I got, we got to get moving. We've got four minutes to go before the Barefoot Broadcast, which I know you also tune into, Owen. Um, just because it's sanitised and made to look pretty in packets, people forget the raw, messy con consequences of eating animals. Better to respect the whole animal like the Portuguese. And there's an appreciation for that. Um, Pete adding, he's very unapologetic um, towards the vegetarians and vegans. Ag antagonistic, you might even say. Mmm, whole spit-roasted pig cooked for nine hours with crackling. Uh, that melts in your mouth. So Pete's a fan there. Um, also need to show some of your more recent creations, Owen. Oh, you sent me this wonderful picture of you. We were talking about fellas the, <laughs> these days, weren't we? Uh, and we all still look like teenagers. I've got my hoodie on this morning. Um, let's have a look at your food as well. You, some beautiful photographs of some of your creations. You're back in business then. The Food Alchemist is available for hire? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Um, that is uh, honey and soy uh roasted chicken yeah which was which was a oh a pleasure to cook and a pleasure to eat all the more so i cooked that for john and pam on their return oh beautiful their, well, what a there. lovely homecoming supper that is so beautiful i always regret showing your photographs because it makes me so darn hungry um mm -hmm. this is a beautiful creation and a beautiful photograph uh, i would add as well that's a, a lovely pasta dish what have we got going on there is that chicken and, and uh prosciutto or something like that chicken, yeah that's right pasta carbonara very Thanks nice. Then. Oh, delicious. And some lovely chops, fresh herbs, no doubt, from the market or from the garden as well. From and the garden. Scotch eggs. Look and at the you. Scotch eggs. That is With something this. I the, 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 the local craft ale bar that, that's here later. Yeah. I would the, the owners were there at the uh, event on Sunday. And I'm actually making up um some samples to take down for them. And I'll be teaching the kitchen staff how to make them so they'll go on the menu. Perfect, mate. Perfect. Scotch eggs and beer. Loving that. And they've got to make sure they're a little bit runny and some of that rock salt to sprinkle on the top. Absolutely. Okay. 
abalone, maybe limpets, if that's the same thing. It so. looks like limpets, actually. Now, now yeah. that I look at the shells themselves, it looks like limpets. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Azorian lampush is uh, Squire of the uh, Shire's guest, also known as limpet clams. And the other picture that I wanted to share with you and, and resolve the mystery here, that's the Azorish with a cogido cooked under the ground. So thank you uh, for your comments on that, Antonio, uh, saying uh, those were Lapash Olympics in the previous picture. And the four picks showed a typical cooking in San Miguel Island, Azorish, where the cogido is cooked for several hours underground. It's buried in the volcanic heat uh, there and cooked. That looks blooming delicious, doesn't it, Owen? Absolutely. Take okay, me there now. Take right. me there now. A little let bit me of 